This is a Punnett square. So t pause, this, uh, pause the audio and t read this question. Okay, so let's get started. So when you work with ratios, okay, when you work with ratios like this, they basically, this is your Punnett square, they basically say 9 are going to be uh, yellow and normal, 3 are going to be yellow and short, 3 are going to be ebony and normal, 1 is going to be ebony and and short. So how can I fill in these percentages? Because this is my model. This is my true model, my hypothesis model. I'm going to assume this thing is true, but that gives you these ratios, and the ratios are a little difficult to, to figure out. But what you want to do is you want to add these up. You want to say 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. Okay, so total that's 12, 15, 16. So 16. So what that means is if you had 16, if you had 16 of these fruit flies, we expect 9 to be yellow and normal. We expect 3 to be uh, yellow and short. We expect 3 to be ebony and normal. And we expect 1 to be ebony and short. So if you look at this, and you said out of 16, if you had 9, so 16 is the whole, and if you had 9 that were going to be yellow and normal, then that would just be 9 over 16, okay? If we had 16, so for every 16, three of them should be yellow and short, yellow and short. So that would be 3 over 16. We expect 3 out of 16 ebony and normal, so we expect 1 out of 16 ebony and short. So this is my hypothesized model. Okay, so if you read the problem, they tell you how many we got, respectively. We observed 59 yellow normal. We expect we observed 20 yellow and short. We observed 11, and we observed 10. Okay, so we took 100 in all. We have 100 in all, so n equals 100. So find the expected. If you find the expected, we would just do 100 times... 100 times 9 over 16. This is be the expected yellow and normal. So what I did already is I threw these in my calculator. I put all these in my calculator already under a list. Okay. So all I have to do is multiply every single one of these by 100 and it'll give me my expected list. Okay. So let me drag this over. Stat. Okay. So if you notice here, Okay, L5 and L6. So if you put 9 over 16 in your calculator, it's uh, almost like 56%. So here are my percents. And if you notice, L5 has my observed in it already. So you'd have to put these observed in one list and the expected in the list right there. And I want to multiply this whole thing by 100, and that'll give me my expected list. Because I took 100 fruit flies, and I need to times it by L6, which is second 6. And it changes them all there. So here are my list. So my expected would be 56.25. And I'll say it once again. The observed have to be whole numbers. It cannot be decimals. The expected can be decimals. The calculator will give you a domain area, domain area, domain error if your observed are in decimals. Okay, so now that I have that, I'll fill that out. And I'll go ahead and do my null and everything. And I'll come back. Okay. So let me move this little stray mark out of the way. And let's set up our null. Let's change colors. So our null is the genetic model. The genetic model is correct. It's always better to write these nulls and words in the alternatives. Okay, the genetic model. is incorrect okay and for here we're just going to do the expected greater than or equal to five some college courses some professors want you to write this some uh, don't necessarily mind if you write it or not okay and we are going to do a chi-squared GOF test let me take our observed and expected Let's go ahead and group that. Let's go ahead and copy that. Okay. 
Okay, so here's my list. We'll be done here in about two minutes. Be done here in about two minutes. Okay, so that's the test. So my chi squared equals, it's the observed minus the expected. Now notice, I'll say this again, if my observed is really close to what I expect, that's probably good evidence that the model is correct. I'll say it one more time, if the observed is very close to what I expect, then most likely the model is probably correct, which would give me a small chi-squared, a small chi-squared, small chi-squared yield, yields large p-values, large p-values would fail to reject. Okay, so if I fail to reject, then you're going to take the null to be true. Okay, so there are some series of ideas, okay, that you should know to be good at this. So here we go. We want to test. I have my data in L5 and L6 on the stat. Okay, goodness of fit test. Okay, it jumped on me. Goodness of fit test. There we go. Okay, so I have my observed in L5, second 5, and I have my expected in L6. Okay, see if you could do the degree of freedom. One, two, three, four. I have four categories, so my degree of freedom would be one less than that, which is three. And go to calculate. And here we go. So here's my data. So my chi-squared is 5.67. And my p-value, my p-value, which is basically my decision maker, maker, is the probability that I'll get a chi-squared greater than 5.67 if the null hypothesis is really true. Okay, I'll go ahead and just round this. And let's make our decision. Or, or before I do that, let's let's go ahead and talk about this. Okay, so here I'll just kind of do. Remember the chi squared is skewed to the right. It's always kind of good to do these graphs. So what you obtained was a p value, or I'm sorry, a chi squared of 5.67. And if I shade that to the right, which is why this is greater than. This is how we obtain the p-value, which is 0.129. Now, alpha being 5% would be this area right here. We call this area the rejection region. Rejection region. Call that the rejection region. So this is 5%. And if you could see, our chi-square wasn't large enough to make a rejection. It was not large enough to make a rejection. So since since our p value is greater than an alpha of five percent, we fail to reject. Now we did not, you have to write in context, we did not find evidence that the model is incorrect. Okay, and that's all it.